Hey everybody, we're back. Welcome to another episode of Vex Remix. My name is your host, Nelson Everhart. This is basically a look back on an old video game soundtrack. Interestingly, I just recently became aware that Respawn Records is actually putting this soundtrack on vinyl. And it's supposed to be available sometime here in July 2020. Blows my mind that something that never really existed in the analog state is now going to be on a record. But this has been quite an adventure. The moons of Jupiter had to line up at the exact right time. Plus, um, you know, pandemic. Other than that, everything's been smooth sailing. So let's talk about some of the issues here. I know I may be older than some or most of the people listening, but I'm pretty sure I can say that nobody's long-term memory is getting better as time goes by. I never would have thought that I'd forgotten where they came from, where a sound came from or where, uh, you know, what sound libraries I was using or, you know, even how to use a piece of software. Uh, this track was from the Fireworlds in the game. I selected the violin to be the solo instrument in the Fireworlds. Uh, and I had a player by the name of Paul Patterson. He's a member of the Cincinnati Symphonic Orchestra. So a fantastic violinist. And he came in uh, and he graciously, I got in touch with him after many years, and he graciously gave me the permission to go ahead and use his tracks, which is awesome because this track wouldn't sound nearly as good without his playing on top of it. And then also there were a couple uh, loops, a couple tracks going on from the original session that I couldn't uh, couldn't really find where the sounds came from. Again, this is like, a million years ago and my my brain no work so good after a decade or two <laughs> so there's one track just named you know funky loop and i had no idea where that was luckily i found the audio for that eventually and, and pulled it in here uh and then there was also another patch that was the, the track was called patriot games and it, it rang a very uh faint bell in my head stumbled across the sound company uh east west they have a deal going on right now that's access to a lot of their current library and then there's also this 25th anniversary library i, I went through those and looked at them and i was like oh i recognize that one. Oh, i recognize that one and i did eventually find that uh patriot games is a patch in a sound library that was called uh, percussive adventures it's called giga rhythm because giga studio is the uh, software sampler that I used to trigger it through. Really good pro tip to make sure your audio matches what's in the audio as opposed to a more generic title like Funky Loops or Giga Rhythm. I hope that helps somebody who's going through their uh, 20 year old tracks. Up here at the top, these are the uh, Paul's amazing violin audio tracks. Then we got some MIDI down here. I've tried to maintain the uh, integrity of the original sounds. I've updated some of this stuff. I have a harp sound that I like better for most things I do these days, but the original harp from the JV2080 was kind of a unique sound. So I just uh, converted that JV2080 audio into the audio here. Uh, here's the Triton tracks as we go through. This is a patch called Millennium Files, I think. This track Creepy, this is from the sample cell. It's just kind of like some, you know, creepy, dark, hell beast calls i guess i would i would say uh, i used a couple uh bass sounds one of them was sub bass as was the style at the time and then for some of it i wanted it to feel a little more real feeling so there's this rock bass sound on the jv2080 which is it it's okay it had a little more definition to it and i used it in some places i used it in combination with the sub bass to combine the best of both worlds uh bells of sarno is one of those patches that i had to f hunt for on the JV2080, it's on the World 2 card, I believe. This track, uh, I think I've seen it online called the Citadel of Shadows. Uh, but as I originally wrote it, it was for the Fire World. So it's called Fire and then ACY Activity Center. We had Activity Center XYZ. And I just wrote three tracks for it. And we kind of went through, figured out where each of the tracks was best suited in the level. So without further ado, let's have me shut up and play through this track, and then I will come back and, and speak probably ad nauseum uh, and let you know where my head was at when I was writing this. As far as I can remember. So Fire ACY or Citadel of Shadows, however you want to think about it, here it is.
I definitely wanted to play with the, the blending of your orchestral styles and, and techno styles. The DM Pro is providing most of the, the sort of electronic drum idea here. I was always a fan of kind of blending different uh, drum sounds here and the kind of the jungle or drum or, or dub styles uh, were really good for that. You know, there'd be a kick that's got one kind of set of EQ and compression on it and a snare that's got a whole, you know, different thing and maybe more reverb on it. Uh, one thing that I wound up doing a lot of was taking something that I programmed like that and then layering a loop over top of it. You'd, you'd always get something kind of unexpected, something uh, unusual and something that, you know, hopefully complemented the original bit in, in a very new way. So, right, so that's, that's the loops there and then the funky loops. Sounds you know, more like a James Brown break something programmed and then the Patriot Games uh, bit was sort of mixing in there. DM Pro. Here's everything kind of together. Now add the funky loops. So I re really like the layering of those three different kind of approaches to drums or, uh, on top of each other. So this is a recording of the JV2080 uh, cello patch that I had on the orchestral card here. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, Mercato Violin Cellos 1. This is on the Orchestra 1 card. And I recorded the output of that. <laughs> outlining the chords there. I, I did decide uh, for the remix to put these uh, Mercado violas on top of it. So I've, I've done this a lot uh, recently where the low uh, spiccato or marcato strings are kind of providing more of the detail of, and, and the higher pitches are providing more of the the actual tonal sound of it so that's all going on while the solo violin I guess I meant more like a violin duet. Two of Paul in there. I can't believe what a bargain I found for that. So obviously with a fire world, you want, you know, fiery and heat. And there's a lot of classical inspiration that, you know, the, the devil plays the fiddle or, you know, it's a high pitched instrument and it's piercing and it's, and I, I chose the instrument for, for all of those things. Solo these strings here, the 2080 strings. They don't sound horrible, they're a little mushy. Now, here's the new strings that I've put on top of there. Definitely a lot more air uh, in that sample. Uh, and we put them together. I think it still kind of maintains a little bit of the integrity uh, of the original without completely getting rid of it. So the piano that I replaced uh, the JV2080 with is probably my favorite piano sample. It's Cine Samples uh, Piano in Blue. It's from the Clinton Recording Studio in New York, and it's the piano that played on uh, Miles Davis's Kind of Blue. It's so full of character.
least as much character <laughs> as the JB2080 piano had sound had. The original piano that I used in the 2080 was called Classic Piano. It's too synthetic. The attack is always the same and the, the dynamics are always the same. Uh, this harp is the original JB2080 uh, harp. I tried it with the new harp and it didn't, it really didn't add anything, so. See, it's nice. I mean, it's an evocative sound and it has character for uh, you know certain lines and certain things. And then the Triton uh, Millennium Files. Fat analog stuff here. And I'm surprised at how something this synthetic, how good that sounds with m kind of more orchestral and more uh, real instruments on top. It's probably been done more since then, but I really felt like this combination of electronica and orchestral elements hadn't been done at the time. And it, it was really exciting to me to take the rules that said, hey, these things aren't really supposed to go together and go, well, why not? Sub bass bass lines were usually pretty basic. Oh, I'm a dad and that's a dad joke. Right. I mean, that's that's just like it's almost you can't hear it. It's almost more of a feeling. Uh, but then there's a couple places where it needed a little more definition. I still like that rumbly bit. Uh, so here's the rock bass on top of it. That is from the drum and bass card on the JV2080. Yeah, John's rock, John Petitucci. Now let me take the uh, percussion stuff and bring it in because I like the way the bass line and the drums play together here. <laughs> That funky drum bit is so busy that I liked having the bass part kind of just do its thing and then get out of the way and let the funk kind of take over. Here we've got like a weird jungle dub bass line with kind of a funky drummer rhythm going on on top of synthetic drums and then violin playing, you know, a pretty legit line. <laughs> Listen to that again and listen to the bass line and listen to the violin. When the bass line is moving, the violin's not. When the violin is moving, the bass line's not. I think that's what makes up part sound so good. The, the awareness of the others playing. Uh, when you play in a band, you're encouraged to listen to the other players more. Listen to what they're doing. Um, this is always one of my favorite patches on the JV2080. It's called Booster Bips. And it's just like a crazy little computer-y. Uh, just, I like the texture in there, I think. This is called uh, Bells of Sarna. It's on the World Expansion. This was one I had just, I had trouble finding it. And then once I found it, I was like, that was all it was? I could go record some cows out in a field and put a bunch of reverb on it. This is from the 2080. And it's a really nice sound. It's on the, it's called Gong Menu on the World One uh, card. It's got a lot of varieties of gongs and they, they sound really good in different uh, in different pitches. Something I've learned about the gong is that it's kind of important to consider the tuning of it in the same way that tuning drums on a pop track can result in a more sonorous and blended sound. Uh, I think the gong does that too. So I, I will usually try different gong notes in a tune to see which of them you know speaks uh, the best. It's still a low note, but it's still a little splashier than this guy. Which is pitched lower, right? It's more of a wah, kind of a slower opening. So here's the gun roll. 
So that sounds really good and I don't hear a lot of uh, re-triggering and I do hear that with some other sounds, but not with that one, which is kind of crazy with how, how much low frequency information is in there. I hope that you can hear how much fun I was having writing it, especially bring, getting to bring in Paul, work with him back and forth and learn a little bit more about violin playing and violin lines and uh, the sensibility of live players. I actually had, it was five or six different worlds and I had live players on, on each one of the worlds. And they were to a man, world-class players, fantastic. And they all just had the most amazingly productive and creative attitude um, to work with them. And, you know, you might tend to think of people in the symphony as stuck up, but these guys were so nice <laughs> about the music. They enjoyed playing it and they really brought, you know, their A-game to something that, you know, for them was probably like, oh, this is kind of an interesting curiosity. So uh, if Paul's listening, I just want to thank him for uh, playing on the tracks that we've done here. So I'm going to roll as fast as I can into the next uh, Vex track. If you've got a favorite track from the game, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, I'll see if I can get that covered sooner rather than later. All right, thanks, guys. Catch you next time.